The Secretariat of the Patriots has clarified some concerns raised in the media by some Nigerians, including a long-standing ally of the Patriots, Malam Tanko Yakasai. In a statement signed by the Secretary General, Olawale Okuni, General Secretary of the Patriots, and dated 16th August 2024, it reads that, and I quote, while we welcome all Nigerians to offer their views freely on the proposed constitutional conference by the Patriots, it is patently clear that Nigeria has a flawed, unitary, and undemocratic constitution which has made proper governance and cohesion in a highly diverse nation as our own very problematic. It was further stated that most Nigerians are aware of the country's leadership deficit at all levels as a nation and the lack of discipline and commitment at all levels to make sac sacrifice for the country. However, it's the considered view of stakeholders at the last National Dialogue Colloquium that the problems of good and effective governance in Nigeria go far beyond the conduct of the operators of the Constitution and that the failures and impunity of the operators of the Constitution is aided by the fundamental flaws in Nigeria's 1999 Constitution. End of quote. Joining us now is Olawale Okuni, General Secretary, The Patriots. Mr. Okuni, thank you for joining us today on The Morning Show. All right, let's uh, go straight. Uh, thank you. <laughs> All right. Great it is one. my pleasure to be with you. Good. Now, talking about the meeting with the President by The Patriots and the following concerns by some Nigerians, I cited uh, Mr. Tanko, Alaji Tanko Yakasai, in my opening um, remarks, and he had said that, you know, we shouldn't be too quick to call for a new constitution. What's the position of The Patriots? You've also released a statement as to the importance of having of a review and an overhaul of the old and coming in with the new. But I'd like you to speak to concerns by Nigerians like Alaji Yakasai um, as to the constitution that you've asked from the president, the new constitution. Mr. Okuni, can you hear us? Okay, all right. So Mr. Okuni is unable to. It's breaking. All right. Can you, okay, I just it's, asked it's you. It's breaking, I can hear you. Okay, all, all right. In, very quickly, all in response off. to some people who have made comments, like Mr. Tanko Yakasai, I'd like you to share your thoughts, the position of the Patriots. Th th thank you very much. Um, it's my pleasure to be with you again. And I say good morning to all Nigerians. The Patriots is an eminent leaders of thought group at the highest level of thought and intervention for the Nigerian nation. And when you see people gather at that level, it is quite nonpartisan. It is for the interest of the good governance and democratic rule in Nigeria. And so the Patriots will welcome every concern raised about what intervention it is making at any time. Alaji Tanko Yakasai is a long-standing ally of the Patriot. As a matter of fact, preceding that engagement with the president, I had very profound consultation with him, back and forth several days, trying to streamline our engagement with the president. But at the end of the day, it feels a bit um, concerned about methodology. He wanted, and I can quote him, that we first proceed to the National Assembly before the president. He gave reasons, which I will not disclose here. So every concern of Nigerians to what the Patriot is doing is welcome because in any case, this must be inclusive. This must be popular for it to be acceptable to the government and the people of Nigeria. So we welcome all views, all concern. But the, in democracy, the majority will have their way and the minority will always have their say. We take good cognizance of that tenet. So that is um, what the Patriot is saying. Uh, and again, you know, for us in the Patriot, it's not about the Patriot. It's about the people. It's about the citizens. And so when you see all what was put forward before the president, including the protest that was going, we had to make intervention and advise Mr. President to say, look, 
the best thing to do at this point on that nationwide protest is for you to engage the protest leader in dialogue so that we can avert further reactions from citizens, uh, reactions that are not helping the economy of Nigeria. So that is where the patrons stand today. So um, just to be clear, uh, you're on the, can you I mean, sorry? Can you clarify the point on the you don't want to change the constitution? Is that right? They don't make any amendments to it. Can you clarify that point? Yes. Um, given what we know of constitution, what we have today, as stated by the chairman of the patriot, His Excellency Chief Emeka Yonku, before the president is that what we have today does not enjoy the endorsement of the citizens of Nigeria. It was in process, not popular and legitimate. Because it is the process of every constitution that legitimizes the constitution. And it is not the content. I can see that in this route I write one of the best or the best constitution for Nigeria. But it doesn't make it legitimate or acceptable to all because participation of the peoples of Nigeria or citizens is very critical. And if you look at the origin of the 1999 constitution, it was the military who were, who were in a hurry to go, to live under Abdul Salami Abubakar that quickly foisted that, got a committee together to do some few consultation, bring about a report to them, and they, they decree it under what you call Decree, 9, decree 24 of 1999. You don't decree a constitution. It is proclaimed by the people of the country in an assembly. That is what makes it a constitution. A constitution is the ground norm, the totality of the agreement of the citizens and the peoples of a country. Okay. And where that agreement is not established in process, you have to change it. So what you have today, in, a, in essence, is a decree. And so what we propose is that we want to change, to overhaul, to change what exists now, to replace okay. it with a people's okay. constitution that two. will be thoroughly democratic in its process. Okay, two things. Let me break it down for you as simple as I can get it. Truth has to be said. I had the pleasure of interviewing the former president of this, former leader, military head of state of this country, Abu Salami Abu Bakr, and he says he's tired of hearing you people say you, for, you, you force the constitution on him. He said, you people have had democracy for about 21 years. Why don't you change it? And that's a cheeky response to the initial thing we keep saying that oh, it was cobbled together for us. The dichotomy here is that voices in the north does not want this constitutional change because some people are benefiting from it. Pure and simple. That's the dilemma. That's why when we had Confab in 2014 with all the reports, it all came to naught, zilch. How do you reconcile with voices in the north that are saying we don't want this? You're talking about Tanko Yakasai. That's just it. Some people are benefiting. Some people feel the regional system will make it work. That's the sentiment in the south. In the north, they're saying, no, live it this way. And you know where this is coming from. All of these are the events of 1967, thereabouts after Agui Rossi setting and all of that. We all know that long weekend before go on, they take over. We all know who first screamed Araba. So how do you reconcile with those factors? Well, we recognize the fact that um, some people may be benefiting from what exists now to the detriment and disadvantage of the mass of the populace, cities of Nigeria. But it's the duty of a group like Patriot to assuage the affairs, to let them know that it is going to be benefit for all, including them, and that there is danger where you have a mass of the populace that is poor and feel insecure and are creating foisting insecurity on them and they will become target. Because if you leave so many of Nigerians poor, without hope, despondent, they will form a army of you know, people who will want to go for 
those who are benefiting from the system. And it's already happening. In what you call banditry, I ask myself, what is banditry? What is terrorism? What is kidnapping? So, so you find people who are hopeless, who are despondent, turning them into, turning themselves into kidnapping kingpins, because that's the business. And you find some people who are influential, who have some resources, getting into politics to take the common resources of the people. That becomes the most thriving business. So there is a dichotomy between the mass of the Nigerian people and the elites who have cornered or captured the state that we call state captors. And so it is the duty of the patriot to begin to advocate, to assuage the fears. Chief Tony Enauro, whom I served when he was alive, I was the spokesperson for him and the pro-national conference of Arizona, told us and, and said to us at a very, um, very technical, tactical meeting that we must continue patiently to assuage the fears of people who are far away and let them know what we are doing, that we are not doing this thing to break the country or to take their, their means of livelihood. We are doing it so that Nigeria can work for all. Presently, the Niger Nigeria's country is not working for anybody. It's not even working for those who are in government or in power or in business because they face the threat of kidnapping, terrorism, they have to play ransom. And the people are losing, lives have been in thousands. I've never had that I've, growing up in the country, in this, in this nation, that every day in the news, 1,000 kidnap, uh, 200 students kidnap in Benway, uh, ransom, terrorism, banditry, suicide, suicide bombing, all of that are all symptoms an offshoot of a badly flawed and warped governance architecture that is just okay. uh, uh, sustaining a few, okay. a few people. And we, it is our duty to continue to, okay. to advocate and assuage the fears okay. of those minorities. Thank you so much. We'll see how that pans out, how convincing or not to come on board will be. Okay.